All right, so today we're talking about BMW's newest V8 engine. There's been some doozies in the past, been some real doozies. Um, none of which were ever very good. Always had a lot of issues from oil leaks to rod bearings to extreme heat soak. Which of those issues did they fix on the new BMW S68 engine? That's the real question. So this engine actually debuted in 2023, in late 2023. Before then it was N63 and S63. S63 being the twin turbo V8 that you had in all the M cars. N63 being the twin turbo V8 you had in everything else. Very similar engines, a lot of similar issues, including injector failures, tur turbo failures, um, Piston ring land issues, rod bearings, uh, valve stem seals, and oil leaks and coolant leaks like you've never seen. Severe heat soak uh, on the hot V, the turbo sit actually in the intake manifold, which is now the exhaust manifold. And the intake manifolds are on the sides where the exhaust manifolds used to be. It's flipped around. So they have do not make a B68. They are still using the B58 for the six cylinder cars. And they have only made the B68 as of right now. So what do they change on this engine? Well, they changed the turbos. They went to actually a waste gated and blow off valve turbo, which is a little different, the setup on it. Um, those things are now mounted to the turbo itself. What will that do ultimately? It will up the price of the turbos when they go out, right? Um, they fix, try to fix the rod bearing issues on these. They made the rod bearings wider. It's like an old Audi trick what they did back in the TTs back in the day. They made you like a, a 180 horsepower and a 225. You bought the 225, it was 30 more horsepower or whatever it was, and a wider rod bearing and main bearing. Did that really fix the issue back then? Um, it gave them more surface area, but still, I wouldn't say fix by any chance. So these engines, like I said, made in late 2023 on the X7 M60i models, on the X5 M60i, the 2023 X6 M60i, and the XM plug-in hybrid with the 760 X drive, and the latest M5 G90, and M5, M5 Touring, the G99, replacing previous S63, with a twin turbo developed by M. Davidson for broader use. So if you buy an M car now versus a, like a, a 340M or three, what was it, um, M60M, right? Before in the lesser car, in the M package car, you would just get a standard engine. Now they have the same engine in the full M car versus M package car, it's just detuned or a little different horsepower or hybrid or non-hybrid, right? So to clarify a little bit more, BMW S68 engine powers various M models and full M models with horsepower ranging from 523 and models like the X7 M6i and 76i to up over 700 horsepower in the new G G90 M5. And that is a hybrid, right? Incorporating the 48 volt mild hybrid system for enhanced power delivery and efficiency in its different applications, including the X5, the XM, and upcoming X5, X6 M models. Uh, so they have a horsepower figure on what car you get and what the horsepower is. The X5 M60i, 523 to 530. It was basically a little under like G-Wagon horsepower, right? Um, old G-Wagon horsepower. Uh, the BMW 760i X Drive around 523, the X5 M60i and X6 M60i uh, around 523 to 530, so the same as 760i. The BMHM, BMW HM higher output around 644 in standard form, with more in the label red version. All right, and the BMW. Uh, M5 G90 over 700 horsepower in the BMW X5 M and X6M, G65 and G66, expected to use S68 with significant power. 
Okay. Uh, power variations explained. S68 is available with 4.4 liter twin turbo. Uh, the S68 is a versatile 4.4 liter twin turbo. Output varies simply based on the vehicle and its tuning. So like I said, they're doing it all with tuning instead of changing the engine. That is how it runs nowadays. I'm not gonna bore you with other models and makes here because it's getting relentless at this point. We need to go to the uh, engine issues and what we know so far. Keep in mind that we don't know a lot. Late 2023 on the newest models, on the earliest models, is not a lot of time. You know, most of these models came about in 2024. It's just now clicked over 2026. A lot of these cars have less than 50,000 miles on them. As a few probably, I'm sure, getting up that's been run hard closer to 100. As we get more cars to 100,000 miles, we will really start to see the problems come about. Or, if it's like other BMW V8s, as they get closer to 70,000 miles, the fillers will really start coming in. Overheating and cooling. Intense heat soak this is not fixed on this car. I think the V8s with the hot V, you're going to have that no matter what. Especially after hard driving, you stress the cooling system, uh, extended fan operation post shutdown is noted. If you shut the car off, the fan runs like every other M car, right? Oil and seals high heat can accelerate wear on seals, valve covers, valve cover gaskets, oil filter housings, uh, leading to leaks, a common BMW issue. As long as you're using recycled crappy plastic, BMW, you watching this, watching this BMW, you keep using recycled plastic on your engines and coolant lines, they will always fail early. Don't know who needs to hear that, but somebody has not been hearing that over the last 30 years. Stop doing that. If you stop doing that, maybe, maybe you get some of your reliability back in your uh, consumer reviews. Because right now the consumer reports of the BMWs, not good, not good at all. Stop using that recycled plastic on the engines and the cooling stuff. Uh, timing chain wear, still back to timing chain wear. Stop using recycled plastics on the timing chain guides. Other manufacturers seem to figure that out. Toyota Honda doesn't have any timing chain guide failures, but yet here we are in 2026, BMW and every engine has got timing chain guide failures, or almost everyone. Uh, yeah, it causes rattling, misfires, and need checking and need replacing at early, early mileage. Uh, still plagued with electrical gremlins, battery drain issues, uh, with the mid 48 volt mild hybrid system connections have been mentioned uh, in related models, connector issues with the hybrid system. If you use recycled plastics in your stuff that are less than par, how can you buy a Toyota from the 90s that still has all the factory coolant fittings on it and they're not rotten? It's a mystery in it. It's a mystery. Um, you know, a lot of the BMW concerns carry over to this engine. Still, even though with improvements made, still carbon buildup on the valves. Still carbon buildup from the direct injection. Uh, vanal system malfunctions, issues with the variable valve timing components. And just definitely uh, something to be aware of. So if you're going to, let's say... You're going to go buy one of these brand new or a year old. At this point, it's probably the same. If you buy it a year old, let's say it has, it's going to have some miles on it. If it's a year old, right? It's going to have what? Anywhere from 10 to 50,000 miles on it. These are not cheap cars. Some of these are $100,000 cars or more. Will they be $100,000 cars in a few years? No. Will it be $40,000 cars instead of $100,000 in a few years? Yes, or less, or $30,000 cars. Um, and they drop in value like this because of these issues. Because nobody wants to deal with it after a short amount of time and low mileage. If you buy this car, any of these cars, 
and you don't live right next to where you work at and you have to commute this car every day, if you buy this car as your daily commuter and you gotta drive 20 miles each way a day, which is very common, unless you live in the city, New York, somewhere like that. If you live in the Midwest, you're gonna drive this car, you know, 10 to 20 miles each way a day. That's 40 miles a day. Will this car hold up over the next five years, putting that mileage on it? No, it won't. No, it won't. And when it breaks down, what's your options? Take it to the dealer. If it's still under warranty, yes. If it's not under warranty, hell no. Because you're going to get bills that it's going to cost as much as what the whole car is. Can't do that. You have to find any mechanic trying to find a third-party mechanic that is going to accept one of these damn things to work on is not likely. And if you do have those shops say, yes, oh yeah, we'll work on anything. You're going to get it in there. They're not going to know what they're doing. It's going to get more of a mess than when it started. A lot of mechanics don't realize on BMWs, all you guys watching work on your own cars, you know what I'm talking about. You can't muck around with BMW stuff. You have to know what you're doing. You have to be very careful where you buy the parts at and what you're doing, or it will end in a huge disaster, a huge financial disaster. Um, I'm just reading through here. This mentions timing chains again, electric glitches, battery drain. Nothing really new on it. This car, this engine debuted in late 2023, and here we are. The whole book of the crap. What problems will come up over the next year or two? Probably every single problem that the S63 and N63 had. And I was reading through the forums, reading through Reddit, and some guys like, oh, but they probably learned from their mistakes on the S63. And somebody else mentioned, since when has BMW ever learned from their mistakes on anything? Never. Could they fix that stuff? Yes, absolutely. But it's going to take them to stop pinching pennies in manufacturing to get those issues fixed. Which is a shame because to have a nice German luxury car that is not prone to breaking down is what everybody watching this video is trying to buy and trying to get today. That is the car you cannot get today, no matter which engine you buy. A lot of B58 guys in the few videos ago said, oh yeah, I had 170K on my first gen B58. Keep driving, see what happens. You're way above, 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 above the point of major money maintenance and breakdowns. You're just skating on thin ice at that mileage. That car is going to kick you and kick you hard. If you have not been doing anything to it up to 170 K, you're going to throw it in the trash because it's going to be one of everything. Just not the way life is right in the BMW land or the Audi land or the Mercedes land or Porsche land, Volkswagen. You get the idea. Hope this video helps you guys. If you're looking at buying a 2023 and up BMW with the B with the S68, I'm getting mixed up with the S68 engine, twin turbo V8, be very, very cautious and expect some big issues at lower mileage. Like always. Thanks for watching, guys. We'll see you later.